So I felt I'll break the discussion into two separate parts. The first five to six minutes, very briefly, I will talk about what we are building as a company. And the second thing that we are going to do is uh, talk about specifically about growth and a few items around it as to what does it take uh, to be growth ready. And when you're growing, what are the things to watch out for? I think we're still in the trenches of growing our organization. So maybe I can share even more deeper learnings a few years from now. But I think I can also share while being in the trenches, what are the things I'm learning at this point of time. Uh, so we want to make sure that we very honestly talk of ourselves as an urban innovator. And why so? Because of four major reasons. I'll talk about these four things. The first one is we are fundamental engineers. We mean engineering from a perspective that can be so many different ways. So think about every problem that I'm going to talk about, how engineering has a solution for it. Uh, properties are shabby. They're bad when you look at it. Uh, how, do, how do you change that? You change it by ensuring in the lowest cost, how can you make these properties look great, which is actually civil engineering. Right? So we don't mean engineering as a... Uh, so, like what is taught in classes, I mean engineering from the perspective of seeing a fundamental problem and applying first principles to solve them. The second one is we are innovators. We are never derivators. We, like, you know, in OYO, there are very limited things that you can see and say, hey, this is like that one of the US, like never. Uh, we are proud to say that we are among those few Indian companies which has more than 40 copycats outside of India, not just within India. Of course, uh, the third thing that we're very passionate about is uh, how many of you have been to Bombay? Mumbai, okay. sizable group. Uh, Mumbai is not kind to people who have less than 2,000 rupees a night uh, who, are, who are going there for the first time and you don't have relatives. It's not kind. Uh, we aspire to make Mumbai kind uh, when people go to Bombay with less than 2,000 rupees in their pocket. And that is the kind of social infrastructural change that we want to create, that you go to absolute, like we want to create great living spaces for people in any location, in any price across the country. So that's our mission. And we use technology and talent to solve this problem by building an equilibrium in between. That's a little engineering uh, as we call it ourselves. And we focus on three big promises, great quality living spaces in any location and it is affordable. And we've always invented our three-step mobile app. You push two buttons and you get your booking. Early check-in was such a big problem. We promised early check-in for the first time in the world. What are we today? 70,000 rooms. Just for you guys to know, this is seven times the size of Taj Group, which was started uh, more than a century back. Um, and this is in a region of three years. Got seven million plus app downloads. 2.5 million check-ins and close to 5 lakh guests have checked in and counting. And this is just the very start of the scale that we operate in. But this is the most exciting bit. We are today the 14th largest hotel chain in the world. And when you look at the scale, you see all the American gangs on the top. You see all the Chinese gang on the second. And the only Indian company on this entire group is ours. And we believe that on this chart, we will take it. Thank you. We have a very strong intention of taking it from 14 all the way to number one, building it out from this part of the world, and continue to be an Indian company which goes out and becomes a world dominant player. Because we have no questions in our mind that the next decade belongs to this country. I felt it would be an interesting idea for me to just narrate the stories that I have gone through. Considering I'm here, I would imagine that those stories will lead a lot of you to make those outcomes yourself. Um, and you know, if there are any questions, I'll of course go through them. But these are just plain stories. None of this have any management gyan. These are real stuff that happened at our offices and people, um, some of your friends, alum, etc., who are at our office and you would have spoken to them would have told you similar stories. But that's, that's all I'm going to talk about today. All right. So each story will have a narrative, and then we'll talk about it. There are broadly five stories, um, and we'll go through each one of them. The first one is uh, get your shit in order. This talks about uh, the first year of our company. 
We started as Oravel, which was an open marketplace, very similar to Airbnb. When we were doing that, I spent close to three and a half months, absolutely every day, staying in new bed and breakfasts, guest houses, hotels, and so on and so forth. The intention behind it was saying that I had finished 12th grade and I had time be before I started university. And that's the time when you're building a company, which is a good thing to do. But I felt I'd travel as much as possible. That's what you know, people like to do during that period. I remember even when people join new companies, the first thing they do is, I'll go to Leh for 10 days before I start work. We didn't have uh, the budgets of going to Leh, so I spent three months going and traveling uh, and staying at some of the most affordable accommodations in the country. Realized that predictability was a big challenge and after which we started Oreo. Now coming into the story, the company's genesis goes back to the mid of 2013, which is when uh, I came back from a lot of these visits and felt it was time to solve the problem of predictability and trust, which was a large challenge that we were seeing every day. How do we think about solving it? So we went to a hotel partner who, which I had stayed at. He had close to 15 rooms, and of this 15 rooms, he used to fill two of them. As many of you know about how the hospitality industry in India works, there are close to 45 lakh rooms that exist in the unbranded category in India. This entire category is owned by people who have a different full-time business. They, they just had enough cash to be able to build an asset, and their intention is with this asset, they would probably like to generate value by selling it 10 years from now. So they, you know, they want to make enough money to pay for their operational costs, which also they were not able to. So my deal to the first partner, Mr. Rajesh Yadav, great friend, uh, his property unit number is a part of our conference room naming system at our office. The offer to him was business 101. It was like normal dhanda, right? Which was, nafa hua to dono ka, nuksan hua to mera. He said, this was the best deal, right? Like he said, Matlab, aap jaise log pas pehle nahi aate the. Because he felt, young boy, shayad papa ke paise hain, do char mehne jalayega aur bhag jayega yaan se. So that's how our deal started. Because he had no belief that this hotel could make any revenue at all. 15 room property, terrible shape. I started going to Sadar Bazaar, which is what every small or big city has in themselves, which is like the local market and bought things which were very, very cheap, begged, borrowed, stole, and did everything possible. In 35,000 rupees, got the property to some basic condition, which is deep cleaning, ho gaya, uh, removed a bunch of furniture which was not required and was terrible, and so on, and put the Oyo signage on it. It was called the Oyo in Huda City Center. It used to be called Inns earlier. Over time, it's changed. For close to three and a half months, I used to do absolutely everything at the hotel. I was the guy who was transforming the hotel. I was the guy who was doing FNB. I was the guy who was doing front office work. I was the guy who was spending time with the guests and so on. The reason I say this is every time when you're building a company, you have to be the first subject matter expert. There is no option but that. I've seen the best consumer leaders in the world. They know their customer like no one else. It is because they are so related to them. We started with close to 20% occupancy. We sold that room nights at rupees 999, and that became almost like a big thing, right? In a week, uh, the property was selling 90% plus in occupancy. We started lining up. Okay. Uh, lining up saying that, you know, they want to get all their employees come in and stay. Which is the second learning that is always work hard to make sure that your product market fit is well managed. That one property, occupancy of 90%, owner making more money, and brand being out there were the three things that we felt were those little basics that we had to set before we could go and sign up more properties. So we started getting at least six to seven calls a day saying, Hamari bhi property laga do ji. <laughs> Best time ever. We were like, we are in the right place. All the owners love us. We should go talk to all of them. So we started signing properties. We started learning stuff. But the big roadblock happened in the third property, very early again. When we realized that, all right, now we know how these three properties work. 
but how do we take it to the fourth property because everything was being practically managed by me and anuj there was absolutely no scalable proposition we had in the business we were almost like any other guest house chain operator right like anyone jo teen property chala sakta hum bhi waise hi the so how do you change that to a large scale business and we were having a great life trust me in this three properties we used to make 1 lakh rupees each as नेट रेवेन्यू तीन लाख रुपए कमाते थे उसमें से दो लाख खर्च कर देते थे एक लाख रुपए बचता था उससे नया प्रॉपर्टी लेके आ ग्रेट लाइफ राइट नो प्रॉब्लम्स लाइफस्टाइल बिजनेस एंड हैड एंड यू वर थिंकिंग दैट अभी और करने की जरूरत क्या है एक एक प्रॉपर्टी लेते रहेंगे हर तीन महीने लाइफ इज गुड दैट इज वेन यू नो एट द सेम टाइम आई बिकेम अ थियल फेलो एंड आई गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गो टू द यूएस यू नो ऑफकोर्स पीटर थियल इज वेरी फेमस नाउ स्पेशली विद डोनाल्ड ट्रम्प बिकमिंग द प्रेसिडेंट बट he was an amazing source of learning for us uh, you know and not just him the whole foundation and the way uh, he had set that up and that's when i realized learn two major things one thinking really really big and second ensuring that you build innovative products came back to india and spent a lot of time on ensuring that we built processes and systems but in all of this before the processes and systems what we had gotten right was how do we make sure an entire life cycle of a property would operate sign a property standardize it sell and ensure that you deliver a great experience every time that were the four basics that we learned and that is what got us ready for the next generation of growth for our business so whenever you're starting a business get your shit in order make sure that you know what are the three or four magic things that you have and focus on doing just those four things and not many other items the second one is actually slightly related but i'll talk about that as well which is which is about saying uh, the first year we grew from close to three properties in the early january 2014 towards the end of the year when we grew to close to 40 properties in gudgaon alone and for to talk about choose your beloved very well which is the second story january to march was a tough time we were all struggling to grow we were adding hotels but like people were starting to know us our properties were filling up left right and center venture capitalists had started calling us we never thought venture capital will ever come to us uh, so first three months but we were still struggling because there was a lot of hunger tha bahut passion tha ki abhi grow karna hai abhi sab aa gaya business mein but grow kar nahi pa rahe because some fight right like every day You would go try to sell your property to a customer, or behind the phone, Adha, that he is a housekeeping wala bhag gaya. So, when you start your or companies, you will go through a lot of these big challenges where you have this reality check. Remember, you should be very excited when these things happen. You should feel like you are going through the best period in your life, because a lot of people run away from these problems. You should be very excited about these problems. All right. So now coming back to the beloved quotient, there was challenges, right? I asked people how should we solve it everyone said build a good team everyone says this right get a good team that's the most important bit i said okay we'll get a good team i how do i get more people so i uh, started writing on linkedin most of the people who would meet me they'd look at me and then and that point of time i didn't uh, figure out all of these interesting things like having a beard and so on to look older so i used to look very young uh, like uh, so people would look at me and they'd be like uh where is ritesh i'm like this is ritesh <laughs> so it was tough no one no one joined us it was a bad time and people who joined us uh, almost all of them felt they would take advantage of me in some way or the other because they felt young boy i'll like figure out a way uh, tough time hits but finally uh, out of nowhere uh, during my thiel fellowship i was told not to trust two kind of people uh you know uh, of course over time i have liked to trust all of them the first one were consultants um and <laughs> and and the second kind of people were you know people who are mostly like indians who have emigrated to the us and are staying there interestingly the first partner uh, the first one of these times there was one person who got recommended to me a guy called abhinav sinha he was recommended to me by one of my very dear friends whom i really trusted a lot he went to harvard business school but right after that joined bcg at dallas and worked there for 5 years 
So he was, he qualified on both of these parameters, consultant and was in the US. <laughs> so I said, makes no sense to meet him. I was told that not to trust these kind of people. But this friend of mine, he said, you have to meet him. He is a really, really good guy. So I said, okay. There was a property that we had signed but had not transformed. We, we call it transformation. That is when we get a property to an OYO standard. I sent him to a property which was not transformed and was in a terrible state. I felt American Oil realize how uh, tough this business is. He called me two hours later after checking in into the property, saying, Alu ke parate pe bahut amazing hai, Ritesh. So it was the first time I started feeling good about this guy. He was like, he was not complaining at least. Since he came in, our business went from nine properties signed and three live to close to 50 by the end of the year. And he's, he basically said, Ritesh, let's break things between both of us. You will own supply, brand, and sales. And I will own ensuring these properties are well operated and well standardized. And we will have good um, you know, questioning between each other, accountability hogi. But we will be in our responsibility. We will but when we come out, we will trust each other on these decisions. I said, great, sounds good. And Anuj uh, said, Ritesh, I will own supply under you. So I said, great. So three of us were the team when we started. And that one year was absolutely amazing. And since then, I can credit these two people and, of course, a great team that they have together brought across the company to help this company become from where it was to possibly being the largest hotel brand in this country 14th largest in the world and a definitive largest in the world in the next 10 years. The next story is how do you hire? Because these are just leaders, right? Um, and you know, just for all of you to know, we were the largest player by the end of 2014 in Gurgaon. So we said that now let's make it big, let's take it across the country, which was the time of growth. And this we started discussing in the mid of 2014. And the question came, what do we need to be ready for the next expansion? And why do we expand? What is the strategic value of expanding? If you get the first one lakh rooms, you get it without any cost because there is no capex. You get it faster because there is no capex. And whoever gets this first one lakh rooms, most customers will come to them because in the budget segment, there is no other good supply that is available. Once customers are there with you, the rest 44 lakh room owners will invest in their properties for which brand? The brand that brings customers to them. So we said, we want to get this 1 lakh rooms in the next one year, come what may. So by the end of the year, we felt next 6 months, 2014 mid, when we said, Abhi, this is a strategic reason why we will scale next year. We said, what do we need to be ready for it? The first and the foremost was bringing people, this is the third story, Bring, bringing people who are ready to stick their neck out for the mission of the company. For us, very simple ask was anyone who comes and joins us should be a wingy parallel. That is, he should be able to do anything for the mission that we are all aligned for. So we never, in the, in the next six months, we said we'll do two things. One, we will build a very strong hiring roadmap that when grow karna hoga, log achche honge. And second, we will play book eyes and innovate on a bunch of technologies to make sure that next year when we are doing things, things are idiot proof. So how did these two things happen? I'll talk about first the hiring philosophy. At the hiring philosophy, a lot of people in our first you know, teams when they hear us, they ask us, how did you build this team, which is now 2,000 people strong, with close to 500 senior leaders in the company. The way of doing it was the first 50 people were hired by the first five or six leaders who were hired. We sat together with them and said, give us a list of 20 smartest people you have ever known in your life, worked with or so on, and recommend them to us. The first 60 people were all hired from those recommendations. So that was one. So bringing people who were ready to stick their neck out and mostly by reference. Then came the question that what do you keep art and what do you keep science? This is a very important part and something that I learned myself, big part of my learning individually. Most companies in India are built out of Jugaad, right? 
Jugard on both forms. Uh, you know, uh, Jugard in the form they hire people, and Jugard in the form they build their company. We had a very clear view of saying that we will do Jugard to innovate, but uske baad we will build strong processes. Now comes playbookization. I'm using this word for the fifth time. What does it mean? It means taking small innovations and build, making them fully idiot-proof. So we built a very strong supply playbook. The supply playbook was as under. We knew which locations we should go to because there was a lot of demand. We knew what price to sign hotels at because you know rooms would sell in that price. We knew what kind of owners to partner with. So we used to, in the early days, by city, decide which city we will partner with owned property owners and which city will partner with the rented property owners. The reason is, owned property owners are willing to take a price hit but will spend less time to standardize and operate the property. Rented property owners will not take a revenue hit but will spend time to operate the property. So cities where we were stronger as a customer experience brand, we said only owned property. Cities where we felt we needed even stronger partners, we said only rented property. A lot of these things were codified, which means tomorrow when a supply guy went on the ground to sign hotels, he just had to take this playbook. This entire process ensured that we were ready for scaling up. And we did a bunch of other things, but of course, this is a big difference between growth hacks versus product market fit. That is making sure that initial days do the jugad, but great companies take that jugad and build it into a process that operates like a machine, that it just keeps churning stuff out. So he said, that's what you want to do, pick up. Now came the time of execution, the most exciting part of the story. We had built what we called internally a cannon, a cannon to go out and take any freaking country and win that country as a part of product and experience, right? Somebody came to us, it was the same time, how many of you heard about Zorooms? Some of you have. So Zoe was our competitor last year, and you know uh, they effectively did exactly everything that we were doing right uh, in the initial days. So one Saturday afternoon, uh, when this news came about and we saw them getting all these properties live, we called our entire leadership, and everyone was angry, and a bunch of leaders said, and you know we we believe in animal safety, but I'll just use this as a term. This is a part of my CEO training. Ki pehle se ye, it, bol diya karo. So, uh, never use a cannon to just take a bird out. Use a cannon to take large animals out. So, we had built this massive capability. We had playbooks of recruiting. We had playbooks of signing. We had people across the country. All we needed to do was use our capability really well. So, next morning, Sunday morning, 10 a.m., the entire office was called. We were close to 100 people then. We were all called. And I asked randomly to people, how many properties can we sign in the next one month? Give me random numbers, right? Someone said 35. That was a maximum. Somebody said 26. Somebody said 31, and so on. I said, we're going to add 100 properties next month, which is a five times jump. People were like freaking, you know, they're like, this guy has gone bonkers. Another young entrepreneur losing his mind, right? I was hoping that I was not. Um, but then came the most interesting part. I shared with the team a full plan of how we're going to add 100 properties. And the plan was as under. We're going to add 100 properties in Delhi alone, and this is the way we're going to do it. These are the seven clusters. In each cluster, we're going to have mini trucks with these 12 items each hotel needs for standardization. Signings will be done in one morning. Next morning, audits will be done. Third morning, these mini trucks will come to put stuff up. And fourth morning, we're going to get stuff live. And there were ownerships decided by cluster in each of these areas. That's when people started feeling, OK, he's not lost his mind. He knows what he's doing. Makes sense. What came after that? was one of the most amazing things our company has done. We launched this plan, what we call the MI-100. Uh, and we have this funny names for projects in the company. 
uh, it was a Mission Impossible 100, right? We signed 130 properties that month. Mission Impossible was done across the country. We did it in every damn city in this country. Signed four and a half thousand hotels. And there is practically no number two in our business as of date. Okay, so this is, there comes the fourth story, which is acquisition versus retention. How do you think about keeping a healthy balance in your business between Growing up rapidly versus ensuring the systems are working right. So early part of last year, we saw that our customer experience unhappy percentages were starting to drop. We knew for a fact that we were never going to let it reach a place of no return because there was a percentage we always had in mind. Did we let it slip slightly more than uh, we would have? Yes, we did. But it was definitely a place where we could fix it. So last early part of this year, which is 2016, uh, when we were the largest hotel brand, had large revenues, we said we will continue growing, but big focus area for the next six months is to get our house in order. We are going to ensure great guest experience across the country. In the last six months, so I'll tell you the matrix that we were tracking. Unhappy percentage was one. The second matrix, which is public, is our TripAdvisor uh, scores. Our TripAdvisor scores in 2014, when we were in Gurgaon alone, was 4.1. Uh, when we grew nationally, uh, it started dropping from 4.1. By the end of last year, it was 3.7, which is not bad, but it is also not great. So early part of this year, we said, now it's breached our target unit. And this year, first six months, next two quarters, we will just build our company to ensure each of our guests has a great experience. And I'll tell you what was the big flip, right? We were seeing these numbers. We knew we had to get right, but we needed a push. There was a Facebook post um, a customer had put up, which went viral and you know it got talked about and so on. It got a few hundred shares, which was about a bad experience of Oyo. So we said, now is the time, next six months, we will do nothing but fix our experience. Last six months, we did three basic things. First thing, get your promises right. We have five promises as a part of our network. We said we will fix these five things over and over again, uh, which are AC, Wi-Fi, breakfast, hygienic linen, a lot of these things that we generally say. Second was ensure that technology is being adopted end-to-end -end at the hotel, so check-ins happen very easily. And third, delight guests. Interesting updates. In last seven months, Customers who are our top customers, who stay for more than 20 nights a year with us, have increased by close to 40%. Our TripAdvisor scores are at an average of 4.4. TripAdvisor, just go to Noida, right, and search at guest houses and speciality lodging. We are number one in both bed and breakfast and speciality lodging. And not just that, in one of these categories of the top 10 ranks, eight are dominated by OYOs. And our unhappy percentages have decreased by more than 50% in the last one year, you know, in the last six months, effectively. But the reason of saying this is always maintain a healthy balance between consolidation and non-consolidation. You'll always have this period when you run really, really fast. Any one of you who are marathon runners would know this. You sprint, but then you're at a place where you say that, okay, let me get some juice, let me just jog for a while, let me make sure I'm going to survive until I end the race. And then once you're all right, then you freaking sprint like there was no tomorrow. We as a company are in a very exciting stage of evolution now, which is the last part of the story. Never stop evolving. We believe that we've understood standardization like never before. But now we are at the first time where we're going to take standardization to an all new level. In the coming year, you're going to see that OYO standardization will transcend boundaries to making the facade look the same, the lobbies look the same, the rooms look the same, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, open a category which takes our experiences to being the most loved hospitality experience ever possible in this country. We feel that the next year is going to be the most exciting period for us. And I couldn't have been excited uh, you know, for uh, the coming year. And hence, we keep saying this internally, we are 0.1% of what we will become. And in this entire period, we love having 
great partners, friends, and people in the society who believe and trust our brand, uh, as all of you have by inviting us here. So thank you so much for this time. And uh, these are a few stories.